What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to transform radical functions, all right? So first, I just wanna show you what a square root and a cube root function looks like, just so you have an idea before even starting a problem what your graph should look like. And then I'm gonna cover the transformations and then just do a few examples, all right? So uh, first of all, here we have f of x is equal to the square root of x. So this graph is the parent function and basically just looks like that, okay? Uh, here, f of x is equal to the cube root of x, so this graph looks something like that, okay? And let's say you're dealing with a higher root. So here is a square root. Now, whenever you're dealing with an even root, it's going to look basically just like this one. So here we have the square root of x, but what if we had, you know, the square, or sorry, the fourth root of x, or the sixth root of x or the eighth root of x, 10th root of x, all those graphs look exact, almost exactly the same. They all look something like this, okay? Now here uh, we have an odd number. So if you ever have an odd numbered root, right? So if we had f of x is equal to the fifth root of x, the seventh root of x, they're all gonna look something like this cube root graph, okay? So I just want to mention that just so you have an idea of what your graph should look like before even attempting to transform it, all right? So that at least gives you a starting point. Now let's actually talk about the transformations, okay? Starting with translations. So uh, if we had something like f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2, all right? As you can see here, we have a number inside of the radical. So whenever you have a number inside the radical, this shifts your graph left or right. So here we have a negative two, so we would actually shift our graph positive, positive two spaces to the right. You basically just do the opposite. Okay, and it would be the same thing for a cube root function, a fourth root, fifth root, whatever. All of those graphs would simply be translated or shifted two units to the right, right? Uh, now, what if we had a number on the outside? So if we had something like f of x is equal to the square root of x, let's say plus 3, okay? This number out here shifts your graph up or down. So here we have a positive 3, so we would simply shift our graph up three spaces. And same thing if we had a cube root, fourth root, whatever, all of those would just be shifted up or down by this number right here. Okay, now let's talk about reflections. So if uh, we had f of x is equal to, let's say the negative square root of x. As you can see, we have a negative on the outside of the radical, right? So if it's on the outside, it reflects it across the x axis, right? And again, same thing for cube root, fourth root, graphs, whatever, right? Now uh, let's move this negative sign. And if we had f of x is equal to, let's say, the square root of negative x, so if the negative sign is on the inside of the radical, that would reflect your graph across the y-axis, okay? Uh, just a couple more here, so vertical and horizontal stretching and shrinking, okay? So f of x is equal to, let's say, four times the square root of x. Now here you can see we have a number on the outside, right in the front of the radical. Now if it's in front of the radical, this creates a vertical stretch or shrink. So how do you know if it's a stretch or a shrink? So vertical, so let's just write it. Vertical stretching and shrinking is pretty intuitive, or well, in my opinion anyways. So if this number is bigger than one, that creates a stretch, okay? It's, it's getting bigger, it's stretching. So in this case, if we had a four, for example, this would be a vertical stretch, okay? But what if we had something like f of x is equal to one third times the square root of x? Again, number on the outside, right? So that means vertical. And here the number is smaller than one. So it's getting smaller, littler. It's shrinking. So this would create a vertical shrink. Okay, and also we would say here that we shrink by a factor of one third, right? Similarly up here, we would say uh, we are vertic vertically stretching by a factor of four. Okay, now on the other hand, let's talk about horizontal stretching and shrinking. 
Now, if we had uh, the number on the inside this time, so f of x is equal to, let's say, the square root of 4x. So the number's on the inside, so this indicates a horizontal stretch or shrink. For a horizontal stretch or shrink, it's a little counterintuitive. So here we have a big number, but that would actually indicate a shrink. So here we would have a horizontal, I'm just going to abbreviate, uh, shrink. And we would say by a factor, and you always take the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth, right? So we would say a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 fourth, okay? Now if we had, uh, let's say, f of x is equal to the square root of 1 third x, all right, sorry, it's kind of a big square root. But again, we have a number on the inside, so that means horizontal, right? And it's counterintuitive, so this would be a stretch. So a horizontal stretch. And then here, again, we would just take the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 over 3 is 3 over 1, or in other words, just 3, right? So a stretch by a factor of 3. Okay, so those are all the transformations we can apply to radical functions. Now let's go over a few examples, just combining all of this together, and I'm also going to show you how to graph them. All right, let's start with this one right here. So f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1 plus 8. So here we have uh, two different transformations happening, right? Because we have a number on the inside and on the outside. So remember, a number on the inside just moves it left or right. So positive 1, you just want to take the opposite sign. So that would be negative 1, right? So basically in the left direction. So we would move one space to the left, and then this number outside just moves it up or down. So here positive 8 would be 8 spaces up. Okay, now here I have the graphs. So this red graph right here is just the parent function. So it's just f of x is equal to the square root of x. And then this blue one is the one that we just transformed, right? So we went uh, 1 to the left and then up 8, right? So if you look at the vertex, you can see that we went over 1 and then up 8 to right here. All right, next we have f of x is equal to 2 times the square root of x minus 1. So uh, first, the easy thing right here that we can take care of is this minus 1, right? So that means we're going to move plus 1 uh, to the right. Okay, and then here we have a number on the outside. So again, that means we have a vertical stretch or shrink. Remember, vertical is intuitive, so that means stretch, right? So uh, vertical stretch, and by how much? By a factor of 2. Okay, so again, if we graph these, uh, again, the red one is just our parent function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. And then the transformed one over here, you can see that we moved it to the right one space, and then it's getting stretched vertically. That's why it's getting kind of taller. Okay, here we have f of x is equal to negative cube root of x minus 1. So this time we have a cube root function, right? Uh, so the easy transformation to take care of first is this one right here. So we have a number on the outside, so that means we just move down 1 one down, and then uh, here we have a negative sign on the outside, out in front of the radical, so that means we have a reflection in the x-axis, right? So we reflect across the x-axis, and it looks like that's it, all right? Those are our two transformations. So if we graph these, uh, again, in red, I have just the normal parent function of the cube root of x. And then the blue one, you can see we have our two transformations, right? So first, we shifted it down one spot. So this inflection point right here, uh, it's normally at 0, 0 for the parent function, but we moved it down one spot, uh, basically right there. And you can see we reflected it across the x-axis, right? So that's why it basically flipped the other way, right? Okay, here we have f of x is equal to one-fourth times uh, negative x in parentheses raised to the one-half power. Now, whenever you have a fractional exponent, this is the same thing as a radical, right? So basically, uh, one-half, that's the same thing as just a normal square root, okay? One-third is the same thing as a cube root. One-fourth is the same thing as a fourth root, and I think you get the picture, all right? So, in case you didn't know, now you know. 
So we can rewrite this basically as f of x is equal to 1 fourth, and then uh, negative x raised to the 1 half, that would be the same thing as, well, 1 half is a square root, right? So the negative, the square root of negative x. Okay, now a couple transformations happening here, right? So we have a negative symbol inside of the radical, so that means we have a reflection across the y axis, okay? And uh, here we have a number out in front of the radical, so that means vertical, right? And vertical makes sense, so one-fourth would be a shrink, right? So vertical, uh, vertical shrink, and how much? A vertical shrink by a factor of one-fourth. Okay, so if we look at the graphs here, uh, again, in red is just a normal square root graph, and in blue here, you can see we reflected it across the y-axis, right? And it also shrank vertically, that's why it's looking flatter, uh, by a factor of one-fourth. Okay, here we have f of x is equal to, in parentheses, one-seventh x raised to the one-third plus six. So again, here we have one third, so that means the cube root, right? So we can again rewrite this as f of x is equal to the cube root of everything that's in the parentheses here. So one seventh x and then plus six out here at the end. Okay, so the easy one to take care of first would be a translation up six spaces, right? So we're gonna move up six spots and then here you can see we have a number on the inside of the radical. So a number inside of the radical means horizontal something. So again, horizontal is counterintuitive. So here is one seventh. So instead of shrinking, this would actually be a stretch. So here we would have a horizontal uh, stretch. And by how much? Uh, by the reciprocal of that. So by a factor of, uh, sorry, Instead of 1 7th, it's going to be 7 over 1, or simply 7. Okay, so again, if we look at the graph, uh, the red one is just our parent function, and then the blue one, you can see that we moved our inflection point up 6 spaces. So instead of 0, 0, we're here at uh, 0, 6, uh, right there. And then we stretched it horizontally. That's why it looks flatter side to side, because we're stretching it from both ends. Uh, we stretched it horizontally by a factor of 7. All right, last one here. So f of x is equal to the fifth root of negative 32x plus three. Now here we have the fifth root, right? That's an odd number. So we know it's gonna look something like a cube root function, okay? And before performing the transformations, uh, one thing we can actually do is take the fifth root of negative 32. So I'm gonna split this up into two radicals. So we're gonna split it up. We're gonna say that this is equal to uh, the fifth root of basically what's inside here, we're going to split up. So negative 32 and x. So the fifth root of negative 32 times the fifth root of x. Okay, whenever you're multiplying stuff together inside of a radical like we are here, uh, you can split them up into their own radicals, right? And then we have a plus 3 at the end still. Okay, now the fifth root of negative 32, that simplifies to just negative 2. So then here we have negative 2 times the fifth root of x uh, plus three. Okay, now that it's simplified, now we can perform our transformations. So the first easy one right here is this plus three. So we're gonna first transform this by going up three spaces, right? Here we have a negative out in front of the radical. So that means we're going to reflect it, right? Across the x axis, okay? And we also have a number out in front of the radical, so that means vertical something, right? And again, vertical makes sense, so that means this is a stretch. So we have a vertical stretch, and this is by a factor of two, okay? So now if we look at our graphs over here, uh, you can see again in red, I just have my parent function, and in this case, it's actually the fifth root of x, but you can see it looks very similar to just a cube root. And the three transformations we had is going up three. So you can see the inflection point was originally at zero, zero, but now it's right up here at zero, three. You can see we re reflected it across the x-axis, right? That's why it's flipped the other way now. And we also vertically stretched this by a factor of two. That's why it looks taller than the original one. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. 
And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.